cute. And you want to take care of it, so it teaches you responsibility. Responsibility to me is keeping your room clean. 1997. Oh boy, oh boy. Getting into the late 90s. 97 would be a year when we would see the last of a princess. Tiger in a green jacket, and the beginning of watching movies and <clears throat> chilling. Forget about it. We hope you've been getting a lot out of these timeline videos. You make me want to be a better man. Today, we're going to talk about the news, culture, sports and entertainment, and all that was weird in the 90s. This is Timeline. We're gonna get you revving because this is all about 1997. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Channel and let us know your favorite 90s band. Now, how much of 97 do you wanna see? All of it, Kevin! This is 1997. How about I sell you a piece for 100 Gs? Okay, front me. Popcorn! The New Year started off with an immediate blow to the music world when Towns Van Zant, the 52-year-old country folk troubadour, died. Van Zant, a lifetime substance user, was recording a solo LP with Sonic Youth's Steve Shelley when he fell and subsequently underwent surgery to correct a hip injury. Less than a day after the surgery, Van Zant spent the day drinking vodka and was then found by his 14-year-old son later that evening. If you were watching cartoons on the morning of January 11th and you lost reception, it was most likely because the Telstar 401 satellite got zapped by a massive cloud of electrically charged particles. This satellite, which had been orbiting around 22,000 miles above Earth, was hit by a coronal mass ejection from the sun, which is just fancy science talk for a blast of plasma from the sun's powerful solar corona. Of course, helioseismologists, those who study the sun, will know that although this coronal mass ejection happened on January 7th, its plasma didn't reach Earth until the 11th. The following day in Overtown, Florida, one of the poorest neighborhoods in Miami got a little wealthier when a Brinks truck filled with cash crashed on an elevated highway and rained cash down on the streets of Overtown. This has been complete pandemonium. People have been climbing over fences, climbing over each other, doing whatever they can to get at the money. The local authorities eventually broke up the cash grab, but not after locals made off with over $400,000. On January 20th, President Bill Clinton kicked off his second term in the White House, although he was already dealing with the Whitewater scandal. Clinton's second inauguration was preceded by a January 17th Drudge Report news item which alleged that the president had an affair with Monica Lewinsky, a White House intern with big hair and a bigger heart. We're getting off and I go, I'm like, all right, I love you, butthead. I called him butthead. You did. Moving into February, while O.J. Simpson was acquitted of all criminal charges in the murders of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend waiter Ron Goldman, he wasn't so lucky in the case's follow-up civil trial. The unanimous 12-0 jury vote awarded the Goldmans $33.5 million in compensatory damages. The only problem with that is that Simpson has only paid the Goldmans $132,000 since the ruling. That means if you factor in the decades of interest on what he owes, Simpson is still in the hole for over $70 million. Somehow, the Juice still finds plenty of time to work on a short game. That's why they call me Juice, right here. Four days later, during the U.S. Hot Rod Monster Jam, Corey Scott, a 28-year-old motorbike stunt rider, attempted a jump, one he had successfully landed four times before. In front of 30,000 spectators, Scott failed to grab onto the netting and crashed onto the ground below. He was immediately taken to Jackson Memorial Hospital, where sadly, he was pronounced DOA. On February 27th, the Republic of Ireland's High Court granted its very first divorce since the country implemented a constitutional ban on the splitting of marriages in 1937. This issue went two to one again. Quite clearly, social changes have taken place in Ireland. Before the 15th Amendment of the Constitution of Ireland, couples and crappy holy unions just had to wait it out until death did they part. Nowadays, Irish divorces are still not the easiest things to get. Couples have to live apart for two years, and each partner has to accept that there is no way in hell they'll ever get back together again. That being said, Ireland also has the lowest divorce rate in Europe. 
In late February, Larry Phillips Jr. and Emil Matasaranu stormed and robbed a North Hollywood Bank of America a little after 9 in the morning. While the actual heist was successful, its escape was a mess, and the men were met with immediate gunfire from the LAPD upon exiting the bank. The two bank robbers, outfitted with body armor and illegally modified assault rifles, traded gunfire with the intent of escaping in their getaway vehicle. But instead of driving off, Phillips and Matasaranu went out in a blaze of gunfire. Moving into March, Christopher Wallace, also known as the Notorious B.I.G., was shot in a drive-by shooting after a Vibe magazine party at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. Now what are you reporting? We'll sit back to Rooster. We're shot in our car right now. Wallace didn't make it more than 50 yards from the museum before a car pulled up and an unidentified man fired four close-range shots. The 24-year-old rapper was pronounced dead at 1.15 a.m., nearly six months after Tupac Shakur died under similar circumstances. On March 13th, the people of Arizona, Nevada, and the Mexican state of Sonora witnessed several UFOs hovering in the air for over 12 hours in an incident known as the Phoenix Lights. Reports of otherworldly, mile-long aircrafts and V-shaped objects with blinking lights were confirmed by witnesses. But the military didn't offer much in explanations other than to mention something about safety flares. If they were aircraft flares, they would be dropping slowly and moving laterally back and forth relative to each other. Flares, the graph of the change looks like this. The Phoenix light, psh, flat graph. Arizona Governor Fife Symington III, mocking the incident, held a press conference and trotted out a person on stage dressed in an alien costume. Speaking of spaceships and aliens, six days later on March 19th, 38 members of Heaven's Gate, a San Diego-based cult, were found lifeless after taking their own lives. Dressed in a uniform of black shirts and sweatpants, black and white Nike decades, and armbands with the Heaven's Gate Away Team logo, 39 of Heaven's Gate members were persuaded by cult leader Marshall Applewhite to take their own lives in order to board the supposed spacecraft that was trailing the Hale-Bopp comet. Pikachu. Its name is Pikachu. Oh, it's so cute, it's the best of all. You'll see. Oh, hi, Pikachu. Pika. On April 13th, a 21-year-old Tiger Woods won the Masters Tournament. There it is, a win for the ages his first of golf's four major championships. And he did it with a record-breaking 12-stroke lead, becoming the tournament's youngest winner. While Woods was already creating a buzz within the golfing world, this Masters win launched his nearly mythical status, where he'd go on to win 82 PGA Tour wins, 15 major championships, and break numerous golf records. Sticking with sports, two days later, Major League Baseball honored the great Jackie Robinson by retiring his jersey completely across the board. In honor of Jackie, Major League Baseball is taking the unprecedented step of retiring his uniform number. Number 42 belongs to Jackie Robinson for the ages. April 15th was chosen because it was the day, in 1947, when Robinson made his Major League debut for the Brooklyn Dodgers at Ebbets Field. Trust you guys to make me a decent last meal? Ooh, stay. At the end of April, the sitcom Ellen aired the puppy episode, the hour-long episode in which Ellen announces that she's a lesbian to Susan, who is played by Laura Dern. I'm so afraid to tell people. I mean, I just... Susan, I'm gay. The episode caused quite a stir. Christian fundamentalist groups protested. Advertisers like J.C. Penney, Chrysler, and Wendy's pulled their commercials. And some local affiliates didn't even air the episode. Of course, DeGeneres' interview in Time Magazine, which hit newsstands two weeks before the puppy episode, was her official coming out statement. Moving into May, a trans sex worker who went by the name Shalimar entered a Toyota Land Cruiser at 4.45 a.m. in West Hollywood an area renowned for its prostitution. A patrol saw Shalimar enter the SUV and promptly pulled the Toyota over on suspicion of soliciting sex. 
Eddie Murphy was behind the wheel. Murphy claimed he was just being a good Samaritan by offering a girl a ride home late at night. On May 21st, Radiohead released OK Computer. The band recorded the album in England's historic St. Catherine's Court, an 18th century manor house where the band began experimenting with layered soundscapes, abstract lyrics, and weird recording techniques. Their label, EMI, complained that the record was too uncommercial and couldn't market it. But OK Computer has been cited as one of the greatest albums of all time, winning Grammys, Brit Awards, and in 2014, it was included in the National Recording Registry as culturally and historically significant by the Library of Congress. Take that, EMI. Baseball purists weren't thrilled about it, but on June 12th, Major League Baseball Interleague began play between American League and National League, with the Texas Rangers hosting the San Francisco Giants. The National League's first ever designated hitter was the Giants' Glen Allen Hill, who would get in a bit of hot water for steroid use with his teammate Barry Bonds. But we'll get into the Mitchell Report in about a decade. The next day, Steve Kerr went from a solid shooting guard to a Chicago legend overnight, when the Bulls beat the Utah Jazz in a 4-2 World Championship win. Still sick from an alleged poison pizza sent to him by a local restaurant, Michael Jordan fed a pass to a wide-open Kerr, who sank a 17-footer with five seconds left in the fourth quarter of Game 6. Kerr's shot was the final dagger for the Jazz, and gave Chicago their fifth championship win and Jordan's fifth MVP award. Staying with basketball, eight days later, the Women's National Basketball Association launched their inaugural season. The first points scored that evening were from Penny Toller of the Sparks, who scored two from a jump shot at the baseline. Toller eventually moved up to the Sparks front office, where in 2019, she would be fired as vice president and general manager of the team. After she burst into her team's locker room following a game two loss during the semifinals and gave a bizarre pep talk, peppered with more end bombs than Richard Pryor's Live on the Sunset Strip. I've heard about this. We'll be looking into it as a league. Um, we understand the heat of the moment, but we don't condone that kind of language and we'll be reviewing it. On June 24th, the U.S. Air Force released a 231 page report titled The Roswell Report case closed, which stated the alleged Roswell, New Mexico UFO crash of 1947 was false. The report, which was released on the eve of the 50th anniversary of the Roswell crash, detailed what was first identified as recovered aliens were actually just crash test dummies used in the Air Force's parachute tests. To emphasize their point, the Air Force released a second report, which stated that the supposed spacecraft that was found on the Roswell site was just a weather balloon they were testing in a top secret military exercise called Project Mogul, which was a program intended to spy on the Soviet Union's nuclear tests. One day later, a judge in Kingston, Jamaica, issued an arrest warrant for singer Sade after she skipped a court hearing for an alleged reckless driving charge. Sade, AKA Helen Falasha de Adu, was charged with reckless driving and leading Jamaican police on a high-speed chase in Montego Bay. Sade said those police were trying to extort money from her, as Jamaican police are sometimes known to do. She never did go to court, and the smooth operator vowed to never step foot on Jamaican soil again. The next day, the literary world welcomed a new hero when J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone hit bookstores. That was the best moment of all better than anything that has come since was me seeing it and it was a real book in a proper real bookshop and it was wonderful. Bloomsbury Publishing only printed 500 copies of her novel, with 300 of those going straight to England's public libraries. While Potter won a small UK award and gained a respectable following, Rowling's tale didn't blow up into an international phenomenon until October of 1998. Heading into July, the bell rang on Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield's rematch, seven months after their first bout. Tyson struggled to avoid Holyfield's headbutting for the first two rounds. When Tyson walked out in the third round without his mouthpiece, referee Mills Lane, yes, that Mills Lane, ordered Tyson back to his corner. Then this happened. What happened here? He got bit, I think. Tyson bit off one inch of cartilage from the top of Holyfield's right ear and spit it out on the canvas. He bit his ear. Can you, can you go on? Yeah. But Iron Mike wasn't done. He bit him again. He bit he him again. again. Tyson bit Holyfield again. That chomp stopped the fight, disqualifying Tyson and giving the win to Holyfield. 
On the same day, and after 156 years of rule by the UK, Hong Kong was ceded to Chinese control under the one country, two system principle. It occurred with a fancy ceremony, attended by British Prime Minister Tony Blair, Prince Charles of Wales, as well as Chinese President Jiang Zemin. Hong Kong has shown the world how dynamism and stability can be defining characteristics of a successful society. With a population of around 6.5 million people, Hong Kong made up 97% of the total population of all overseas British dependent territories at the time. Most people consider this the end of the mighty British Empire since the late 16th century. It was a good run, Britain. Calcium and milk helps bones grow. Okie dokie. Three days later on the 4th of July, NASA's Mars Pathfinder touched down on Mars and became the first U.S. spacecraft to land on the red planet in more than two decades. It launched on December 4th and traveled 120 million miles in seven months with the purpose of demonstrating NASA's new landing procedure. Flash forward to May 6, 2002, when Elon Musk founded SpaceX and promised to make it possible for everyday people like you and me to live on Mars one day. Good luck, Machete. In mid-July, on the 15th, we go to Miami Beach, Florida, where Gianni Versace was shot on the front steps of his mansion by Andrew Cunanan. Across the globe, Andrew Cunanan is in fact a marked man. Cunanan, who was obsessed with the world-renowned Italian clothing designer, wasn't close to Versace, but they ran in the same sex for hire circles. Cunanan lived as a kept boy in San Francisco for several wealthy men. Eight days later, a lifeless Cunanan was found in a docked houseboat not far from the Versace crime scene. He died from a self-inflicted gun wound. The reign of terror brought upon us by Andrew Cunanan is over. After being in business for 118 years, Woolworth closed its doors in America for good on July 17th. Founded in 1879, Frank Winfield Woolworth originally marketed Woolworths as a discount five and dime shop. While Woolworth had a good run for almost a century, the stores were hemorrhaging hundreds of millions of dollars a year and was suffering from declining sales, thanks to the hundreds of Walmarts popping up all over the southern U.S. For her 200th birthday, the USS Constitution, also known as Old Ironsides, set sail under her own powers on July 21st, which isn't bad considering the wooden hulled warship hadn't been taken out for a spin since retirement from active duty in 1881, a full 116 years earlier. The frigate sailed for 40 minutes, at one point reaching four knots. That's 4.6 miles per hour to you land lovers, from Massachusetts to a permanent home in the Charlestown Navy Yard. The award for the luckiest man in the world on July 25th went to Rick Danko, vocalist and bassist for the band, who received a suspended prison sentence from a Japanese court for smuggling narcotics into Japan. Danko blamed his wife, explaining that he asked his wife for cold medicine. Instead, she slipped him heroin in between the pages of a magazine. Heroin, Robitussin, we've all made that mistake. Somehow, the judge bought Danko's story and suspended his lifetime imprisonment. Danko died two years later on December 10, 1999 from heart failure after decades of using and obesity. Shocked and amazed at the wonders of Necroplast? For a limited time only, you too can have this handsome epidermis for the insane price of your soul and a buttload of pain. Let's get out of here! Oh, was it the ones with the big long heads and the black eyes? Ah, they took them on their ship! Oh. Did they give you an anal probe? Ah, what's an anal probe? That's when they put this big metal hoop with you up your butt. Whoa, they gave you an anal probe, Cartman? No, I mean, <clears throat> why would they do that? Originally called Kibble, Netflix was founded on August 29th by Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph. Hastings said he got the idea for the company after he racked up $40 in late fees on a rental of Apollo 13. Houston, we have a problem. The service launched as a rental and sales platform where they would mail archaic DVDs to their customers. Once the subscriber was done watching, they'd mail the DVD back in a prepaid envelope. By 2007, started offering subscribers the option of streaming some of its movies and television shows directly to their homes through the internet. 
By 2012, the company got into the original content game with the debut of Lilyhammer. Two years later, on October 8, 2014, the Netflix and Chill meme was burst on Twitter. In one of the biggest stories of 1997, if not the entire 90s, Princess Diana died from injuries in a car crash at the end of August. The crash took place in the Pont de Lomme tunnel in Paris. Diana and her boyfriend, Dodi Fayed, were being chased by paparazzi when their driver, Henri Paul, whose blood alcohol level was three and a half times over the legal limit, crashed into one of the tunnel's pillars at 65 miles an hour. While Diana's bodyguard survived, Paul and Fayed died instantly, and Diana was still alive when Frédéric Maillet, an off-duty physician, happened to see the crash and ran to the car to help. The paparazzi surrounded the wreckage and started taking photos of Diana and others while she laid there murmuring, oh my god, and leave me alone. Michael, before the break you were talking about your nightmare. And the other night I had this nightmare that I was running in my Arizona Spiridons and everyone was looking at me, or trying to. I even heard this little girl say, mommy, why is that man all blurry? I felt like screaming. Why can't people see the real me? Uh, the guy who walks to the mailbox. The guy who chews his food slowly so it digests well. Can I stop now? Of course you can. You're gonna make it, kiddo. Moving into September, the Scottish referendum for devolution was held in Scotland in a vote which would determine whether or not resources would be available for the creation of a Scottish parliament with a transfer of powers to a lower level, and whether the parliament should have tax-varying powers. The vote was affirmative for Scots on both counts. Donald Dewar and Tony Blair have delivered tonight. They've delivered for Scotland. And the Scottish parliament was established following an election in 1999. William Wallace would be proud. They'll never take our freedom! Mother Teresa died on September 5th, although the world's attention would be consumed by Princess Diana news. Born as Agnes Ganja Boya Jayu on August 26, 1910, Mother Teresa walked away from a fairly wealthy family life and at 18, joined Ireland's Sisters of Loretto and took the name Teresa in honor of the French Saint Therese of Lisieux. She would go on to dedicate herself to a life of education, teaching privileged Bengali students at a Calcutta high school for girls before God spoke to her on September 10, 1946, after which she dedicated the next 51 years of her life helping the poor in underdeveloped countries. The first F-22 fighter jet made its maiden test flight eight years earlier on September 7th in Marietta, Georgia. With a sticker price of $138 million, Lockheed Martin was able to knock out two Raptors a month, complete with an M61 Vulcan rotary cannon, six guided missiles, two free-falling bombs, and the capability to travel at Mach 2, or 1,500 miles an hour. We flash forward to November of 2008, when the F-22 was deemed irrelevant by Secretary of Defense Robert Gates. We must reform how and what we buy, meaning a fundamental overhaul of our approach to procurement, acquisition, and contracting. Stating that the Raptor was overqualified for post-Cold War combat with countries such as Iraq and Afghanistan. By April of 2009, President Obama called for the ending of the F-22's production but hinted at its replacement, a mystery fighter aircraft under the U.S. Air Force's Next Generation Air Dominance program. What are you selling? It's a game. A game? Specifically tailored for each participant. One day your game begins. You either love it or hate it. Are you going to spend the rest of the evening prying at that clown's mouth? Originally called Backrub, founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin who were both PhD students at Stanford University at the time, registered the domain name www.google.com on September 15th. Google wouldn't go live until the following year, but it didn't take long for the URL to become more than a search engine. In what began in a two-car garage in Menlo Park, California, Google quickly became the technological behemoth we know today. Backrub, what was that all about? Sticking with tech, the next day, Steve Jobs returned to Apple as the de facto CEO, two years after being fired with a brand new vision for the struggling computer company. Within less than a year, Jobs developed Mac OS X and the revolutionary iMac G3 in 1998. The iPod came along in 2001, the iPhone in 2007, the MacBook Air and iPod Touch in 2008, the iPad in 2010, before passing away on October 5th, 2011. Of course, even a lionized visionary like Steve Jobs did some pretty crappy things in his second term. 
such as berating older Whole Foods employees, asking prospective employees if they were virgins during job interviews, and abandoning his daughter who was living off welfare for years. But uh, hey, the iPhone is pretty cool. Have you a valediction, boyo? Rollo. Tomasi. At the end of September, Hooters, the restaurant known for their waitresses with the beige pantyhose, orange dolphins shorts combo, was forced to pay out a cool $3.75 million to settle a class action sex discrimination lawsuit towards men who applied for jobs but were denied employment. While Hooters technically lost the suit, the company was still able to get around the Civil Rights Act because they classified their Hooters girls as entertainers. No good, Rico! At 8.45 a.m. on November 17th, 62 tourists visiting the popular tourist site of Deir El Bahari across the Nile River from Luxor, Egypt, were attacked by six gunmen disguised as police. While there has never been solid confirmation, it's assumed that this terrorist attack was the work of the exiled leaders of Al Jamia Al Islamia, an Egyptian Islamist organization that attempted to destroy Egypt's economy. Do you like apples? Yeah. Well, I got a number. How do you like them apples? <laughs> In mid-December, the Pokemon episode titled Computer Warrior Porygon aired and drove 685 Japanese children to drop to the floor in seizures caused by a repetitive flash of light, an incident referred to as the Pokemon Shock. Almost every Japanese child knows Pocket Monsters and its star, Pakucho. Many were kept in hospital for over 24 hours. Often those affected had no history of epilepsy. That was the first and only time that episode has aired on television. Why are they turning? Is it hard over? It is, yes, sir. And the world's largest metaphor would be how 1997 would end. 1998 was just weeks away, where it would be a year where a presidential scandal would have consequences. A space station would start construction, and Willie would finally be free. I see you roll your way into the semi. But that is for next year. You've got to wait a few more weeks. I can't wait to Coming soon, 1998. So what do you think? What was your favorite 90s memory? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other Weird History Timeline videos.